Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Amadir asker alacho bishoy holo antigens and immunogens. Antigens among immunogens, the kubi. গুরুত্বপূর্ণ এবং বেসিক জিনিস ইমিউনোলজিতে আমরা আমাদের লেসন প্ল্যানটা দেখি লেসন প্ল্যানের মধ্যে আছে অ্যান্টিজেন ইমিউনোজেন হেপটেন ক্রাইটেরিয়া ফর অ্যান্টিজেনিসিটি ক্লাসিফিকেশন অফ অ্যান্টিজেন্স অ্যান্টিজেনিক ডিটারমিনেন্ট এপিটোপ প্যারাটোপ এন্ড সুপার অ্যান্টিজেন এই ক্লাস শেষে যে রিভিউ কোয়েশ্চেন গুলো আমাদের আনসার করতে হবে সেগুলো হলো হোয়াট ইজ অ্যান্টিজেন অ্যান্ড ইমিউনোজেন ক্রাইটেরিয়া ফর ইমিউনোজেনিসিটি হুইচ ওয়ান ইজ মোস্ট এসেন্সিয়াল অ্যান্ড হোয়াই হাউ ক্যান ইউ ক্লাসিফাই অ্যান্টিজেন হোয়াট আর দ্য ডিফারেন্সেস বিটুইন টি ডিপেন্ডেন্ট অ্যান্ড টি ইনডিপেন্ডেন্ট অ্যান্টিজেন হুইচ টাইপ অফ অ্যান্টিজেন উইল গিভ লং টার্ম ইমিউনিটি হোয়াট ইজ সুপার অ্যান্টিজেন হোয়াট ইজ এপিটোপ অ্যান্ড প্যারাটোপ where paratop is located these are the examples of antigen you can see it starts some foods microbes some plants even some medicines let us uh, start with the literal meaning of antigen literally antigen means any agent which can generate antibody that is antibody generating substance or stimulus is known as antigen and immunogen means any agent which generates immune response you know immune response may be either antibody mediated or cell mediated so immunogen is a stimulus that produces a humoral or a cell mediated immune response humoral immune response by antibody and cell mediated immune response by t cells later on the definition of antigen has been changed now any substance that binds specifically to an antibody or a t cell receptor is known as antigen that means antigen may or may not produce the antibody or t cell agent just they will they have the capacity to bind this is the latest definition so by definition all immunogens are antigens but all antigens are not immunogens but for simplicity both antigens and immunogens are usually referred to as antigens very often we say when antigen is introduced it will produce antibody like this what is antibody because we have said we have said antigen is a antibody generating substance a stimulus that generate what is antibody antibody is a disease fighting protein there are many types of proteins in our body coagulation protein cytokines and antibody is a disease fighting protein they are the front liner these antibodies are developed by the body in response to presence of an antigen rather we should say immunogen historical and biochemical evidence for immunoglobulin structure when a serum of any person is electrophoretically separated it is uh, it goes into three fields alpha beta and gamma and this gamma globulin levels are increased in immunized animals and could be decreased by incubation with a specific antigen cabot and tiselius in 1939 they showed that gamma globulin fraction of the serum contain antibody later on porter proposed a y shaped structure in 1962 after discovery the fcm F, fab fragment in 1959 and edelman discovered four chain structure of immunoglobulin finally Porter and Edelman the own Nobel prize in 1972 we will discuss in details about 
this immunoglobulin in, in antibody lecture. This is in short the electrophoretic mobility of serum proteins. And you see the usually the gamma globin portion is not that much, but when antigen is introduced in a body, gamma globulin fraction becomes much higher. Now again we come to the antigen. Antigen mostly they are proteins or large polysaccharides from a foreign organism. It can be from microbe and from non-microbe. And again, in case of microbes, any structure of the microbe, capsule, cell wall, toxin, viral capsid, flagella, etc., they can act as antigen. And in case of non-microbes, say some people are allergic to egg, some people are allergic to some other proteins like any food protein and surface molecules from transplanted tissue. So, Antigens can be from microbes and from non-microbes as well. Lipids and nucleic acids are only antigenic when combined with protein or polysaccharides. <coughs> the substances that act as antigens, amader mona rakta hobe antigen holo amader shorire baire ekta dinish. Shoja kotha era holo amader shottru. So antigen can be infectious material, can be non-infectious material. Among the infectious material, microbial structures, as I said in the previous slide, that any structure, of course, should be protein, cell wall, capsule, flagella, etc., microbial toxin. And among the non infectious material, allergen like dust, hair, food, etc., foreign tissues and cells from transplant or transfusion, and sometimes body's own cells that the body fails to recognize as normal self like cancer cell, cells involved in autoimmune disease, these are, they can also act as antigens. And in those cases, it is known as autoantigen, and the antibodies formed are known as autoantibody. How can we classify antigens? There are various bases of classification antigens, maybe according to chemical nature, according to mood of action, epitope, according to source. According to chemical nature, yes, proteins, actually all proteins are antigen. Polysaccharides are potentially, but not always. Nucleic acids are poor antigens. Lipids may act as heptids. According to mood of infection, thymus dependent and thymus independent. Thymus dependent, all protein antigens are thymus dependent. The term thymus dependent because to develop antibody against the antigen, they need the help of the T helper cell. Without the T helper cell, antibodies against protein antigens cannot be formed. This thymus dependent antigens are beta antigen. They are used for vaccine preparation. They give long lasting immunity. Thymus independent antigens are polysaccharide antigen. These polysaccharide antigens can independently stimulate the B cell to produce antibody, but they are very short life and mostly IgM. According to epitope, they may be unidetermined, univalent, actoronid, actayase, unidetermined, multivalent, multidetermined, multivalent. According to source, may be exogenous or endogenous. Exogenous, we all know from outside sources, bacteria, virus, etc. Endogenous, it, if it is uh, engulfed and the body presents as an endogenous self antigen. So the independent antigens, they are complex carbohydrates. They do not require processing by the antigen presenting cells. They can directly interact with the B cells. And so there is immediate production of IgM, but there is no memory. So the immune response against the T-independent antigens are short-lasting. And so the T-independent antigen, that is carbohydrate antigens, are not good agents for vaccination. T-dependent antigens, they require macrophage or other antigen presenting cell for their processing. They require T-helper cell and 
After processing, they are presented along with major histocompatibility antigen. We will take a separate class on MHC. And these T-dependent antigens are mostly proteins, and they are strong antigens, better antigens. Antigens may be exogenous, like bacterial infection, bacterial protein. Endogenous, typically derived from any protein, viral infections of an infected cell. What is the basis of immunogenicity of any substance? Most essential basis is foreignness. That is, it must, what is foreignness? That is, our immune system should recognize it as foreign, not of self component. Immune system during development knows all our body parts, our RBC, our WBC, our all structures, our liver, our, our spleen. So if it recognizes that as not self, then it is known as foreign. And this is the most essential criteria of any substance to become integer. Molecular size, yes, it should be of high molecular weight. You know, Antigen means shotru, chotru molecular weight or shotru haina, the borrow. And chemical composition, it should be of complex and heterogeneous. Degradability, the body should, be, should degrade it. And adequate dose and route is also a basis. Some antigens, when taken orally, are not antigen. But when the same antigen, it is taken by inhalation, are antigen. And genetic constitution of the host uh, is important factor. You know, many, about 10 to 15 percent of our human population are atopic. They are, they are allergic to certain antigens. The whole substance does not act as an antigen. A portion of an antigen that is recognized and bound by antibody or T cell receptor complex is known as epitope. They are also called as antigenic determinant. Paratop, the site in the variable domain of an antibody or a T cell receptor that binds to an epitope of an antigen is known as paratop. Paratop, we will discuss in detail when we will discuss about antibody. Regarding now a epitope, you see this whole substance is antigen, but only this portion or this portion or this portion on surface portion they will bind with the paratop. That is, uh, they are known as antigenic determinant and they will bind with a specific portion of uh, antibody. Polysaccharides have many epitopes but of similar specificity. So they are multivalent unidetermined. But proteins, different epitopes are of different shape and say they are multi-determinant, multi-valent, different types and different number. Proteins have many epitopes of different specificity. All these are epitopes. Antigens and epitopes of virus, you know, virus structure, virus and the structure of a capsid, nuclear protein, these all things act as uh, antigen. This glycoprotein is uh, any protein, nucleic acid protein, all the protein can act as antigen. There are epitope specific receptors on the surface of B and T lymphocytes. B and T lymphocytes, they recognize the B and T lymphocyte receptors recognize the antigens and the antigens which match with the receptor. B receptor is surface bound immunoglobulin and T receptor is similar to B lymphocyte structure. B lymphocytes, they recognize epitopes directly on the antigen. No need of any processing, no need of association with MHC. T lymphocytes have T cell receptor, they have some limitations. They can recognize only peptide antigen, processed peptide and in association with MHC. B cell receptor and T cell receptor are the difference. B cell receptor, Jekono antigen processing, MHC association, recognize. But T cell receptor, the limitation is the 
processed peptide and association with MSC1 or MSC2. This is a bacterial cell. I'm not again, bacterial shop will structure all other than the epito, flagella, tarpore cane, judicono, capsule take, cellular structure, the shop will be low, antigen, epito. Heftin holo, a molecule too small to be monogenic alone, but which can be monogenic if coupled to a larger molecule, referred to as carrier molecule. By itself, a heptin can react with an antibody. For example, penicillin acts as antigen. In fact, we can say antigen without immunogenicity is a heptin. It can bind, but it cannot stimulate to produce antibody. You see, this is a heptin. It can bind with a, a paratope, with a B cell receptor. And it cannot induce this B cell, B cell to produce antibody against. But when it is bound with an antigen carrier, then it can stimulate the T helper cell will stimulate the B cell to produce antibody against that heptan. Antigen antibody reactions. The main function of the antibody is to bind with the antigen. That is the main function. The binding of the antigen antibody occurs in the variable, variable region of the antibody molecule. We will discuss about the variable region of antibody when we will discuss about the antibody. This is instantaneous and exothermic and may form complexes and antigen antibody when they are bound, they may lead to lysis by complement mediated lysis. Molecular weight of some common experimental antigens used in immunology. There are two classes of T cells, T helper and cytotoxic T cells. One class of T helper cell ke bola hai CD4 among T cytotoxic T cell ke CD8. Amra jokhon T cell er maturation among differentiation porbo jokhon ekta dekbo. T helper cell interacts with MSC2. Thus CD4 T cells are MSC2 restricted. And T cytotoxic T cell, that is CD8 cell, interacts with MSC1. Thus, CD8 cells are MSC1 restricted. I can a rule of eight. MSC2, CD4, so chart the eight are CD8, MSC1, so again eight. This is one type of MSC restriction. MSC restriction for that R B Tokanamrashita details are T helper cell but C D4 cell they help all cells, both B cell and T cell, by sending signals, cytokine and surface proteins. And T helper cell function as the brain of the immune system. They instruct both the T cell and B cell. There are two types of T helper cell, TH1 and TH2. TH1 helps the cytotoxic T cell and TH2 help the B cell. I'm going to monitor it. Again, Niger Y, T helper to cytotoxic T cell or a Kajin, T helper to B cell. These cytotoxic T cells, CD8 cells, they become cytotoxic T lymphocytes when they are activated. That is the infected cell and but after getting the stimulation, helping stimulation from T helper cell, they become cytotoxic T cells and they are the target cells for uh, target of by cell mediated immunity, by intercellular vector, etc. Adjuvants, uh, a term the prior cell, they are some substance that non specifically enhances the immune response to an antigen. What is the mechanism? They prolong the presence of the antigen, they enhance production of co-stimulatory signal, they induce granuloma formation, and non-specifically they can stimulate the lymphocytes. Super antigens, uh, pathogenic antigen. Antigen will opokar kore, protection antibody dai, kindu super antigen amadher opokar kore. Super eta khara. Khadarato usually bacterial toxin, they interact with exceedingly large number of T4 lymphocytes, tokhon, Tara uh, T helper cell ke stimulate kore, onikulo 
interlink in two toy. Conventional antigen, Tara Sudu uh, MAC among T cell receptor, the actor cell case, super antigen below directly bind outside the MSC2 molecule and activate large number of T4 lymphocytes. The conventional antigen is processed along with MSC2 or MSC1. They are uh, presented to the TCR, T cell receptor, and only few T helper cells, required number of T helper cells will be activated. For super antigen, they do not need the processing, they directly bind with the T helper cell outside the TCR and they can activate many T helper cells, resulting in production of excessive amounts of cytokine known as interleukin 2. These excessive amounts of interleukin 2, they themselves can cause fever, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, etc. And they can also lead to secretion of some other cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor, interleukin 1, inflammatory cytokine, platelet activated factor. And they can lead to the same endothelial damage, acute respiratory distress syndrome, disseminated intravascular coagulation, shock, and multiple organ system failure seen with endotoxin. And this activation of self reactive. T lymphocytes can also lead to autoimmune attack. And examples of super antigen, toxic shock syndrome toxin 1 from Staphylococcus aureus, streptococcal pyogenic toxin, staphylococcal enterotoxin, super antigens associated with streptococcus pyogens and also thought to be responsible for psoriasis. And there are many other examples also. So take home message from this lecture. We have said immunogens are foreign substances, which leads to stimulation of our immune system, resulting in cell mediated immunity by T cell or humoral immunity by B cell, leading to antibody production. Antigens binds with the specific T cell receptor or B cell receptor. Antigens are usually proteins, may be polysaccharide and lipopolysaccharide. They may be exogenous or endogenous, T-dependent or T-independent. T-dependent antigens are protein antigens, stronger antigens, and they are the agent for vaccine production. Super antigens are pathogenic molecules, toxin, usually toxins. They non-specifically stimulates and leading to stimulus T helper cell, leading to excess secretion of interleukin-2 and some other cytokines. So thank you very much for watching. comment box Assalamualaikum